US markets are almost expecting with certainty a rate cut in September. In today's nugget section, we'll talk about the likely impact in the Indian markets and will that impact your portfolio. Hi everyone, welcome to the update of 22nd August. Today was a weekly expiry for Nifty. It was actually a no event. Today, Tata Motors fell 1.5%. There were some cuts in the power pack, but not deep ones. More stocks were in red than green today. Today, there was a good balance between bulls and bears. Telecom picked up today. Banking also was up. But software and power pack were down. Now in telecom, there was no major uptick. However, the weightage and the market cap of Bharti Airtel is so huge that 1.5% up on Airtel took the indices up. Autos were choppy. Tata Motors was down most 1.5%. M&M also has been sliding 1.3% down. Now, ever since Tata Motors acquired JLR, they have never been able to command a good PE. The legacy of debt and poor performance carries on. Look at Tata Motors 9, Maruti 26, M&M 28. M&M also was around 12-13 only. It has picked up in last one year. But no such re-rating for Tata Motors at all. Now, Nifty had the strangest expiry today. Literally a 50-point range on expiry day. This is unforeseen. Bank Nifty also was trading between 5900 and 51050, 150 point range for Bank Nifty. These are one of the narrowest ranges I have seen for Nifty and Bank Nifty in last one or two years. Now what happens in this kind of day is whether you buy put options or call options, the decay will kill you and you don't make money. Just stay where you are for half an hour and most of your money, if it is expiring today, is literally gone. This is a perfect setting for option sellers. But option sellers are very few and SEBI is actually making option selling even more difficult in the times to come. Now today I am showing you graph for gold. So one thing I did few months back was I moved a lot of money out of equity and bought November 24 tranche which coincides with the US elections. After the budget gold tanked by 9%, SGB did not fall 9% but this tranche also fell. It has recovered significantly. Around the budget this was 75.50, hardly 200 rupees. Similarly, if I look at a far off tranche SGB 28, which is year 2028, then that was trading somewhere around 8000. It fell to 7300, nearly 10%, but that also has recovered to 75,250. So, in some ways, the global rally in gold has actually cancelled any effect of duty cut in terms of the gold prices in the country. And we are not even at the starting point for the festive season and marriage season. This number is heading to 80,000 in double quick time. FIs for a change bought today along with DIIs. The combined purchase was around 4,200 crores. Reliance did not go anywhere. TCS took a break. It corrected. US markets were looking okay yesterday. Alphabet was the only one which was down a percent. Bitcoin is showing a minor cut. But remember it was at 59,000 yesterday. It is already crossed 61,000. So this is the breach with respect to the opening price for the day. Rupee strengthened a bit. But it is very close to all time low. Crude picked up a bit, 0.6% up. Now Reliance these days hardly has any pattern. TCS was down for the day. HDFC Bank was choppy. ICICI went up whole day. ATEL minor correction towards the end of the day. SBI up. ITC down. HUL down. Infosys down. LNT choppy but with positive bias. Banks were mixed bag. Bank of Broda corrected towards the end of the day. Kotak Mahindra corrected. PNB corrected. But HDFC Bank went up, ICIC went up, SBI up. As a result, Bank Nifty kept going up. Only Axis Bank and Geo Financial were down. The volumes continue to be low, nothing above 100%. Defense Pack, there was minor uptick in HAL and solar industries. Also, Paras Defense either up 5% or down 5%. But overall sector was looking weak only. Not much interest. That is also visible in the volumes of larger players. Musgaon Dock was the only one with high volumes. I am trying to catch Cochin Shipyard in the morning but it kind of opens in the negative zone only. But that is the highest point of the day on most days. Now the fear I have is sell here and it will go like this north. I will probably try with little quantity one day. Same with GRSE open at the highest point of the day. BDL same, Musgaon Dock same. So book profits around 930 perhaps is the best strategy and then buy back around 3315. Today, metal pack was looking good. Hindustan Zinc went up 1.5%. When you see a slope here, the stock may have opened with a gap up. IT sector was due for some profit booking. That happened today. The 52-week highs continue to be nearly at a stone's throw. The power producers and transmitters were not looking good at all today. Adani power down most 3%. Adani green down. 
even NTPC power grid big cuts. The sector was down 1.3%. The oil pack did not go anywhere. In fact, Reliance also literally there was 0% change. Volumes are picking up. There is some action coming up in this sector. Food and tobacco literally no change in the top players. Tata consumer was up 2.4%. Adani Vilmaro hit an upper circuit yesterday. Today it was down 3%. HL did not go anywhere but Godrej was up 3.5%. Today, 19 sectors were up compared to 29 yesterday. So, significant fall in the market breadth. The greed was at 52%. I talked about one beverages earlier this week as well as last week. It has been on steroids of late. Just 6.8% from 52 week high. So, most of the fall after the result has been covered. Today also it was up 3%. The overall beverages sector was up 2.2%. That too on fantastic volumes. Asian paints continue to go up. So LNT up a little, RVNL up 1.2%, some buying interest returning in the construction sector. That also reflected in the cement pack. Adani Enterprises 20% away from its 52 week high. Trent creates a new 52 week high every day, up 3% today. Astral picked up a bit, Kajaria Phenolex were both down. Insurance corrected, LIC down 0.3%, but no major cuts. Investment banking was mixed bag, HDFC up, Nippon down. Heavy machinery was down today. Real estate recovered today. Macro tech was still down, but everyone else was up. Kalyan Jewelers was up 10% today. There was a block deal where promoters bought back a lot of the stake from a foreign institutional investor. This has nearly erased all of the losses since the budget day, nearing 52 week high now. This had no correlation to Titan, but Titan also was up 1%. Page Industries 1.5%. Nifty 50 had a 50 50 split today. 25 stocks down, 25 up. Best contribution, of course, came from ATL. ICICI Bank, Grassim, SBI, HDFC Bank, but TCS, Tata Motors, NTPC, MNM, ONGC, and Wipro were pulling Nifty down. Next 50, Indigo was up a lot, 4% today. Godrej was next, followed by Burn Beverages, Trent, The Legards, Adani Power, Chola Mandalam, Adani Green, Hevels. Another no trading day today. The stocks I have are still not out of the woods, so there was nothing to sell. I am a little short on capital right now and I don't want to use emergency capital that is reserved for a stock market crash. So I am avoiding buying at current levels. Minor regret today, Mrs. Bechter which I sold last week was up 5-6% today. So missed that rally but I invested that amount in Hinswan Zing which has also gone up so that's okay. Now tomorrow also if markets are up then I might sell a bit and be a little on cash. Yesterday, it almost became certain that US will cut the interest rates by about 50 basis points or 0.5% next month. If that doesn't happen, there would be bloodbath in the US markets. Now, interest rates have certain effects on markets, including US market, India market. It's just like the birthday, you know one month in advance that a birthday is coming, but there is celebration on birthday. So that day, there will be a party, definitely. But markets prepare for the event ahead of that. In fact, it is already happening right now. So I'll quickly discuss some points which are related to the impact of US interest rate cuts. Bond yields, US has a very mature and very big bond market. What happens is suppose the bonds today are at a coupon rate of say 6%. Once interest rates are cut, the new bonds will be at say 5.5%. So what happens is demand for the old bonds which have a longer maturity like 6%. That is high. People want to buy the old bonds because that will give a higher yield. As a result, the price for the older bond goes up. So it won't be 0.5% up, but the difference of interest rate 0.5% will diminish. This bond say it was 100 rupees. It will be priced at slightly higher than 100 rupees to reflect the profit that a person would make by buying the old bond compared to the new bond. Eventually, it will not make too much of a difference in buying the 5.5% bond which is new versus the 6% bond which is the old and people will have to buy 5.5% because it is of a slightly longer tenure maybe. Now what will happen is people already know this is the first interest rate cut not the last one. So there will not be any terrible rush to buy the bonds or trade out what people already have. People will wait for the next interest rate cuts which may happen in October because after that there is election in the US markets. Markets might wait for that. US housing now people have been eagerly waiting but again, like I said, people will not rush to buy homes. What happens in US is refinancing is very costly. So if the interest rates right now are 6%, 5.5% is definitely better to buy a home. People who want to buy homes now will wait for the next interest rate cuts because they know that after this, when interest rates are cut, they will be paying a higher coupon for a significant time till they refinance, which is costly. 
सो बिसाइड सेंटिमेंटल अपटेक आई डोंट सी अ मेजर चेंज इन द डिमांड इन यूएस हाउसिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दिस पर्टुलर इंटरेस्ट रेट कट यूएस स्टॉक मार्केट एंड यू ओवरऑल इन्वेस्टमेंट सीनैरियो दैट विल गो अप सेंटिमेंट अराउंड दैट टाइम बट वंस द इवेंट इज ओवर देर विल बी प्रॉफिट बुकिंग इन माई ओपिनियन नाउ यूएस ऑल्सो हैज अ लॉट ऑफ लिक्विडिटी स्पेशली इफ द फेड प्रिंट्स लॉट ऑफ डॉलर हेड ऑफ द इलेक्शन टू पंप इन टू द इकोनॉमी then this may not happen in fact stock markets may go up only jo vidhan and kamla harris may actually want the fed to do that ahead of the elections i don't foresee a major crash in the us markets till the elections are over that will probably shield the other global markets also unless someone does something with japan attempted a month back now dollars coming into us some smart dollars may head back to us and people may invest into us treasury bills the old bonds before they become expensive that is before the interest rates are cut so you might see the appetite for bonds going up right now which means dollars will exit other countries and enter us making us dollar stronger as a result indian rupee will weaken fii's might take the money out and invest in us at least temporarily that may be happening already because inr is heading towards an all time low in any case if this phenomena pans out then rupee will cross 85 for sure so brace for impact if this is 85 then it will impact a lot of the industry exports will benefit now it which is going up right now last few days that may already be kind of factoring in the depreciation in rupee which is good for exports imports will have a problem oil will become costly the crude coming in now the export part may be taken care of because one leg is getting costly one is cheaper but the local consumption wise there would be about 1 to 2% increase now crude has already kind of gone to 76 77 levels it was hovering around 80 81 a month back so that is right now okay but if crude goes up and the currency weakens then we might have an issue and petrol diesel prices may go up that will lead to local inflation in india i am personally seeing indian banks not to go up too much at this level yes business from one bank could be shifting to another one bank may become more efficient one bank may suffer some bank may have more npa other banks may have more provisions so all those things will play out locally but i don't see any impact on banks per se right now because of the impact of the interest cuts rbi's reserves may get impacted if the dollar outflow is steep overall this is an hypothesis this is for educational purpose don't use it for investment decisions hope this was useful thanks for watching i'll see you tomorrow